Hi, in this video you will learn how to move data between Windows and JavaFX. This is built on top of uh, a program I already made that can open up Windows. Like this, open a new window and like that. So in this video I'm just going to show how we can easily move data from one window to another window. So this is based upon my previous video where I showed how to build this. So if you're unsure of that, look at the previous one and you'll see how to build this. So um, we have two windows here. We have the cool window and we have the sample window or these are actually contents. So when we start up, start up our program, we load the sample window, sample content. And then there is a button that actually opens up the new uh, window. So one of the questions I often get or problems that people have is how do I move data from one window to another? And we somehow need them to share some data. So when we're talking about sharing data, we, we want them to sh share some specific instance of some class. So we need to move something from one to another. And how do we do that? That's the, that's the, the part we want to to fix here. So we can't do it. The FXML files, these are just for looks. So it's, it's just how things should be set up and look. So there's no functionality in these. So we can't get any help from these in order to move data from one window to another. So if we want anything to work, we need the controllers to communicate somehow. So that means when I open up my cool FXML controller, I need somehow to make the cool controller understand uh, or get the data from the, the normal controller. And the way to do that, then controller needs to know about cool somehow, this cool class, it needs to know about that. So how does it do that? So in my previous example, I showed you we could just copy this part to open up a new window. But unfortunately, this won't be enough if we want the controller here to know about this controller over here, because we need the instance and that instance is loaded through this FXML loader. But in order to fetch the controller, we need to use this FXML loader, but we can't just use that because it is static. Let me show you FXML loader. So there's no nothing in here for uh, getting a controller. So we need to have an instance of the FXML loader instead. So instead of just loading it statically like this, which is fine when we don't want the controller, we need to create an instance of the FXML loader. We can just call it loader equals new FXML loader and that's it. And then we would probably want to have this as part of the constructor. Okay. So now that we have the loader, instead of using the static one, we want to use the non-static one, the instance of the loader like this, so that we load it. Uh, so we, this is two different ways of using the FXML loader. So now we are using the dynamic one instead of the static one where we have an instance of the loader. And let's try to run the program and see that it works exactly the same way. So there's no difference in that. Only difference is that now we have access to the loader instance. So the loader actually have a lot of information about this file. So if I type loader, there's actually something called get controller. And that will give us, it says T here, which just means it can give us any type of controller that we want. So if I say get controller, I need to specify the controller. And in this case, it's I know it's cool. So I'll write cool equals get controller. So now I have direct access to this and the instance of this controller that is bound to this FXML file. So let me say that again. I have this FXML file 
I can see that it is bound to the cool class. So the cool class is the controller for that. So after loading it, then the loader can get the, the instance of the specific controller bound to this specific instance of this uh, FX, loaded FXML. Yeah. So now I have the uh, instance, I can do different things. So let's say instead of just saying cool, I could maybe do something like setting some different text uh, on this uh, FXML file. So in order to do that, I need, I need a method for that. So let's do something like this. So before I do that, I need to do something to actually being able to change the text in here. So I go to code, I set my FX ID to label main, I'll call it label main, save that. And I will go, I can see it here. So I'll just use this create field label main. So now I get like a public label, label main. That means that now I can actually change the label. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to have some kind of method that will enable this controller to change the label. So I'm going to create my own method, which will be public void. And then I'm going to call it set label we could call it set label main that's probably fine and i'll say string and then call it label text so th what this method does is just saying label main set text and i'll set it to whatever is within the label text. So that's basically it. So I go back to my controller because now I have a public method in here called set label main. So I can go back to my controller. I can say cool dot set label main, and then I can put anything in here. Uh, awesome, for example, and then run. So now it says awesome instead of cool. That's pretty awesome, but um, it still seems a bit off because yeah, 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 we can, does it really come from in here? This is still quite static. So let me show you something. If I go into my sample here and then create something new, like I'll go, uh, sorry, controls, and we'll go for a text field just to show you Put it here and I'll give that an FX ID called TXT um, main like that. Save that and I will go in here and create that field in the controller. So whenever I click the window, instead of just setting it to awesome, I'm going to say I'm going to use the text main get text to set the label in the other window. So now all of a sudden, anything that the user types into that window will go to the other window, like cool. So I get a cool window, awesome. And I'll get an awesome window. So this way we can move data from one window to another window. So that's basically how to do it. So in another video, I'll show you how we can get data also the other way, because right now it's pretty easy because that knows about that. So if I write something here, it's pretty easy. But what if I want to change something here and put that back in this window and then close this one, kind of like a um, confirmation window or something like that. 
I'll show that in another video.